Well guys, if you haven't figured it out, we're going to be taking a look at the Schrade SCX4. I'm JJ Johnson with Reality Survival and uh, happy to be over here on Zombie Go Boom TV today to talk to you a little bit about this axe, or this tomahawk. Um, I have been out here jacking with it for quite a while and uh, I'm actually really impressed with it. Uh, when I first kind of saw it, I kind of thought, man, what is that going to be used for aside from, you know, crushing zombie skulls and that kind of thing? I mean, is it really going to be a useful tool? And uh, what I'm finding out is, that, yeah, it really it can be used for a lot of things. Um, I mean, it's essentially a replacement for, you know, a light, a light axe or a uh, tomahawk. You know, I mean, that's what it is, a tomahawk. Uh, what I meant to say was a hatchet. Um, my first impression was that, man, this thing's going to be too light or, you know, it's not going to be able to cut very well and all that kind of stuff, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, it really, it really cuts pretty awesome. So, uh, stick with me and we'll get going. We'll take a little closer look at this. We'll take a look at some of the, um, types of wilderness survival type skills that you can use this for, as well as we'll have a little bit of fun and smash some, uh, heads and skulls and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, to show what it might do to a uh, to a zombie skull. So stick with me. We'll get. So I've been wondering what this thing will do to a uh, to a head. So let's hit a head of red cabbage with it. Oh yeah, nice and clean. Food preparation, no problem. <laughs> so I was trying to think of, you know, what would what would be a good representation of a skull, human skull, zombie skull, whatever you want. Um, and so coconuts were pretty much the best I could come up with. So let's see how it does with them. Oh yeah. Try a little bigger one. See what would happen if you got hit with one of these things. This one's got milk in it, so. <laughs> see if we can find something with a little more blood and guts. All right, let's see if we can get some blood here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe you guys uh, are out foraging and looking for stuff, and you come across a uh, old bottle of champagne. You know, top stuck, and you can't get it off. Might even be able to use the old axe to open it, or not. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's just take a look and see what it does to this old metal bucket here. Yeah. Too much tears that up. penetration there. See what the edge looks like now. Yeah. It's got some little dents in it, but really it's in pretty good shape. It's pretty impressive. A uh, good forearm sized piece of really solid uh, red cedar. Um, it's been laying on the ground a little bit, but it's still really solid. So we'll hack on this a little bit and see if it can process this up for uh, firewood, for kindling, and that kind of thing.
So yeah, I'd say it does pretty good at that. So, if the question is, can the SCX-4 process firewood for kindling, I would say the answer is unequivocally yes. <laughs> Alright, so it made, made quick work of that stuff. Here's a couple of the little bigger pieces. We'll go ahead and take a look at how it chops this stuff up as well. Now, uh, you may notice that I don't have the paracord on here on the handle, and the reason for that is is because it came off uh, while I was using it. I uh, slipped off the end, and I would recommend to Schrade to just leave that off and actually build this up with like some some rubberized or plastic material, with, you know, that's got a lot of gription and you know that kind of thing on there. Um, perhaps even a couple of scales or something like that to give you a good you know handhold or something like that that could. Could be put in there. Um, you don't necessarily need the paracord on there. I mean, it works fine without it. I just put a little bit of a lanyard on the end, and I would definitely recommend using the lanyard when you're chopping with this thing, because it can fly out of your hand pretty easy. All right. So yeah, so it works pretty good. Okay, so I don't think the the edge is good enough to do feather sticks with it right now. If it was nice and sharp, I'm pretty sure that I could. But let's go ahead and just try to see if we can make some shavings um, that we would be able to use, you know, for uh, igniting some kindling. Thank you. 
So as you can see, with the kind of dulled edge I've got on it now after using it all day, it'll, it'll make some curls, you know, and some shavings, but it's not going to make a real good quality feather stick for you. Um, not unless you touch up that edge. But, definitely make some stuff that you could pretty easily catch with, uh, you know, even a marginal tender or uh, probably even a ferro rod. Now let's take a look and see if we can make any actual shavings. Heartwood type shavings. But it does, it does make heartwood shavings as well, which is cool. Not the most efficiently, for sure. Definitely uh, be better off with a you know a little knife like a Mora or something. But it does it. Okay, guys. So that's been a quick field review at uh, of the SC Axe Four from Schrade. I tell you what, um, when I first got it, I really didn't think that it was going to be all that practical and all that useful, especially in um, wilderness survival type roles. I just didn't think that it would be very effective at cutting and, and processing firewood and stuff like that. But I tell you, after reshaping the bevel and bringing that bevel back to where it's a little deeper bevel, um, and then taking the paracord uh, handle off and just, just having a real simple little lanyard loop like this, it, it's pretty effective. I mean, I, I've processed up some firewood really quick. I've, I've been chopping, um, was chopping on that big log over there. And I've chopped up several forearm sized pieces of firewood and some, some other stuff over there. And I mean, it's not bad at all. Um, it's, it's definitely better than a small hatchet because you've got more length on it. So you get more penetration and stuff like that. Um, it can be thrown. And it's not going to hurt it because the way it's constructed, it's all steel construction all the way down throughout the handle, uh, full tang. Um, you know, this is just a plastic coating that comes over the top here. So you're not going to hurt it to throw it or anything like that. You know, we had some fun smashing it through fruit and, you know, cutting stuff up and all that. I mean, it doesn't do real good for the real fine cutting tasks. Um, I was having some hard, hard time with, you know, getting actual feather sticks uh, to come up with it. But that's at the end of the day, after I had been using it for a ton of stuff. So, you know, if I had touched up the edge on it, I'm pretty confident that I probably could have got feather sticks out of it. But whenever I do a review on something, um, I start the day with a sharp edge and then I go the whole way through. I don't, I don't mess with it. So, um, it is what it is, you know. But uh, overall, I was, really, I was really pretty impressed. Um, you know, let me let me know what you guys think uh, would have been uh, better testing, you know, on it, and you know that would have kind of shown what it can be useful for and all that kind of stuff down in the comments below. I'd appreciate that because I'm always looking for new, different ways to test stuff and you know all that kind of jazz. One thing I will tell you uh, is when you're swinging it, you know, you got to watch out because this is this ends sharp, right? And uh, you know, if you're coming back across on the the backhand side. You know, you got to make sure you don't bring it up too high. You jack yourself in the throat or something like that. Um, so there are some dangers with it. I think it would be pretty sweet if Schrade came out with the exact same thing, but with a hammerhead um, on the end. It wouldn't even have to be a full-size hammerhead, but just, you know, kind of a good little kind of mallet or whatever that you could use for pounding tent stakes and all that kind of stuff. It'd make this thing a lot more practical. But as it was, this even this little pointed end here worked pretty good for uh, for twist foot and kindling and you know those kind of things. So it's not like it's not useful at all, and it would definitely penetrate a zombie skull, as we saw with the uh, coconuts and you know all that kind of stuff. So anyhow, guys, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to be over here on Zombie Go Boom TV. And if you guys haven't seen my channel, it is Reality Survival. You can head on over there and take a look. I do at least three new videos per week. We do wilderness survival, uh, do prepping, and I also do some sort of gun knife or gear review as well. Up, do our uploads on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, 
As always, guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.